Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Running a little late, so I just had to jump right in. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to take a look at some more Doom the Third. Oh, I think we're like on episode five or something. And hello, Steve McDonut. No, that's an unfortunate name. Oh, dearie, dearie me, ladies and gentlemen. So much work, so little time. Okay. And we have rain, because I did kind of just uh, blindside you with, yeah, let's start recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here grabbing lunch, and it's like, oh crap, <laughs> shovel through the catfish as quick as possible. Yeah. yeah that's just because, like, I always have so little time, and next week I've got ten hours every day. Well, except for Monday, because I get Monday off, but I have to make it up. Ouch. Uh, of course I do. So, yeah, uh... And yes, we're still in hell. <laughs> What's up? Hey. Rage kill. Oh, Mech Warrior, ladies and gentlemen, is something I'm going to try to get in. Just today, I picked up a Mech Warrior beginner's box. Oh, there's some Soul Cube. Which was a pretty cool concept. It's sort of like the anti lamet configuration. Now, that's one of the things about this game. It's such a... For me, this hell looks like something inspired by, like, say, Todd McFarlane or something like that. Like. Oh yeah, you gotta shoot the little blue glowy thing. Because as we know, whenever we're fighting a boss of any description, always shoot it in the glowy thing. Yep, uh, we jokingly called it the f new spot. Shit. <laughs> Remember when McFarlane made action? He still does. Oh. <laughs> I thought, uh, that was far away. Yeah, he's still making action figures, they're still pretty cool. I uh, don't agree with him politically, but... Oh god, know, don't tell me he's another fucking SJ dub. Uh, no, but I, I just mean I don't agree with him, the fact that there are certain things that's, uh... I'll leave you to your opinion. It's not like that he's, you know... Signaling like everybody else seems to be in today's age. Uh, it's actually something legitimately politically suspect. See, now I'm curious. I'm gonna have to look that up. Nah, he, he's, no. pretty, he's actually, <laughs> as comic book creators go, he's on the the more sane side. Now that's random. Shooting in the G spot. Okay, you, know what, you know what's kind of funny about that? that? <laughs> I'm trying to kill him, not turn him on. There was uh, actually an, an, an article I read about the uh, when it was first released, the Mercedes, holy crap, G-Wagon. Uh, it said it hits the oh, G-Spot. It's like, really? This is sort of popular science, no less. It's like, um, I did not expect to read that in one of those, but okay. And these little flying, uh, evil flashlight things actually remind me of that fucking parrot in Donkey Kong 1. Uh, I recently did a, uh, a playthrough of Donkey Kong 1, uh, with save states, because that game is fucking impossible once you get to the snow level. Oh yeah, it can get rough. It's impossible! There is no way you could do that without, like, spending months on that game. Oh, trust me, it gives speedrunners a hell of a time. <sighs> Okay, let's pick up the soul cube. We are one. We are the Bramian Thor. You know us as the soul cube. So wait, are the Martians of Prolin Thor, or is it the soul cube called that? We'll never know. <laughs> you know, soul cube, how do you know they're evil? Like, what exactly is good and evil, man? It's like, what if they think well, you're in hell? So I'm pretty sure it's a, a nice large indicator. I don't know. Yeah, but like, like, what if hell is like good and like? Okay, I'm not gonna finish that. Although you know, some, you know, some evil person would probably say that though. Well, the Cenobites did say they're they're known as demons to some, angels to others. Yeah, <laughs> that hell's like Florida. Yeah. You know, I've never yeah, hell's been. not Florida. Florida no, is not great, but not bad either. I have never been. I've never been to anywhere east of Texas, so 
there's that. There's a little shop in Pensacola. Uh, you are I gotta remember, me. it's been ages. Hell like Granny's Nook. Is that a little shop of horrors? Nah, it's an eatery. Uh, that has some really, really awesome crab sandwiches. See, I've never been a big seafood guy, so I, I never, uh, that would be a lot of stuff. A lot doesn't like a thing smell like fish. Oh my. Just be cleanly, my friend. And hello, Turok Fire Seed. And happy birthday, Big Swole. 26. I remember nice. when I used to be 26. Crap, 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 crap. Yeah, I totally meant to start throwing grenades. Don't tell me I'm gonna kill myself. No, don't do it. Goodbye, cruel world. Why could it be replaced? Oh yeah, there's multiple things I wanted to mention. Oh, I am so dead. I'm gonna get fucking hentai banged. Yep. Grenade him. Oh, shit. But, uh, there was something I've realized, uh, recently, and that is, most of the modern day, uh, first person shooter characters were all some kind of superhero type, type of thing. In this game, you're just a generic marine, and in Doom 2016, you are the Doom Slayer, the magical Hell Slay guy. That's so, mostly because the writing of today has just become, oh, we don't know how to do real, you know, relatable characters, so... Let's just crank it up and Mary Sue everything. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. It's like, I, I, I would actually like to re review Doom 2016 if I had the time. Because I actually got some different opinions on it now than when I first played it. It's just not that. It's not bad, but it's not very good either. Especially when compared to this. You know, Doom 2016 is very limited in terms of its story. It's like, oh, well, it's Doom, right? It's not supposed to have a story. Well, that's true, but. I mean limited in terms of creativity. This game is vastly more creative than Doom 2016 was. And, you know, the character you play is actually kind of empowering. It's like, this is just, you know, a generic guy. And he just so happens to be tough enough to, you know, fight all the forces of hell. Whereas in 2016, you are this, you know, super character that, you know, might as well be a god. And it just... It's not... Hey, wait. The way I put it is, it's a good game, but it's not Doom. Yeah, I'd say that, just because you uh, do too much punching I've in heard that people game. say the same thing about Doom 3, though. You yeah, know, but... calling it first-person Resident Evil and stuff. But, yeah, but see, uh... Resident Evil at that time wasn't like this, though. So, I don't know. Yeah, they're speaking from hindsight. <laughs> yeah, because Resident Evil 5 was when it started to get really, you know, action-y. Finally got a chance to try out Conquer's Bad Fur Day. I have not actually played it, but I did know it existed back in uh, 1990, whatever the fuck it was. Oh, when you get a chance to play it, it's actually quite funny. It's... It is very 90s. It's very late 90s, let me say. I know you fight like a uh, talking mound of excrement, and there's a reference to aliens in it, but that's about it. Oh, uh, there's reference to Aliens, James Bond, The Matrix. It, there's there's references out the wazoo. Hey, here's something kind of interesting that you, that you brought up. Okay, references to The Matrix. Has The Matrix actually stood the test of time, or is it strictly a 90s movie? Uh, I'm going to say it hasn't, because when it came out, it actually ripped off a lot from, of all things, anime. Hmm, I can actually see that. You know, like for me, well, the original Matrix has shot for shot rips from things like, uh, shoot. Oh, crap. I would have a, a mind fart, but they there are direct, like the helicopter scene, that's a shot for shot rip from one anime I know of. Hmm. I have not seen. So, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's the test time. I can still rewatch the first Matrix movie and enjoy it. Well, yeah, it's still enjoyable, but I don't know about staying the test of time. I think it's more of. You were there in the moment. You saw it. It it triggered a memory, and yeah, you have that memory now. I don't know. My nephew was like fourteen. He really enjoys Matrix too. So, but here's my question though: Did he see it as a '90s movie or just a movie? Because when you think about it, like James Bond is a timeless character. He can pretty much exist mm. in any time period. Looks like uh, whereas Neo really can't in some respects. 
charge is gone. Nah, it's a, you're lost in the BBS doesn't have all the same appeal. Well, like, you know, Alien, think, uh, for example, despite being an 80s movie, doesn't feel like it's tied to the 1980s. You know, I was thinking about the first Terminator movie. I'm like, I know it takes place in the 80s because of time travel, but I think a lot of aspects of it hold up. So, I wouldn't really call it an 80s movie. Yeah, I would too. I mean, it's one of those... Well, Terminator's things. trick, the original Terminator's trick is that it takes a lot from film noir. Right. It's it's in with the same class as Blade Runner. It takes heavy, heavy cues from film noir and just brings it up to its era. And it works surprisingly well and lasts. The, and it has lasted the decades quite well. Whereas The Matrix, I don't think does. I think The Matrix, when you watch it, you immediately think 90s. Because it feels very 90s. Whereas The Terminator, despite being an 80s film, doesn't feel as 80s as it could be. It's kind of the same way with Star Wars, the originals. They do, even the prequels to some degree. They don't feel like they're tied to any one time period. When you watch, you know, Phantom Menace, for as shitty as it is, it doesn't really feel like a 90s movie. It feels just like a rather timeless kind of thing. And when you look, when you really look at, you know, like the original Star Wars, you know, Episode 4, that is a movie from 1977. Here's my question. What other movie from that era is able to is able to really look like its own Okay, my brain kinda stopped because I'm fighting a fucking art ball. But what other movie from that era was able to maintain that timelessness? Uh I'm trying to think. Well, let's see. 77, we had, of course, Star Wars. We had the first Smokey and the Bandit. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that has held up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could agree uh, with that. Jaws. The Jaws wasn't 77. Oh. Crap, crap, crap. Oh, it's yes. good. It holds up, but it wasn't 77. Uh, we had oof, Saturday Night Fever, which is the antithesis of holding oh, up. Oh, fuck. Jaws is 75. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Goodbye Girl, that didn't hold up at all. A Bridge Too Far, now that held up. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good war movie. Apocalypse. Apocalypse Now wasn't 77, but yes, it holds up. 79. What, uh, is the criteria specifically the year, or can it can't uh, go yeah, we, we, I imagine you could stretch it a bit. Yeah, I guess you could look at like all the movies from like the late 70s, because Alien still holds up quite well. Uh, you know, Smokey and the Bandit's an example of a film that, uh, you know, is very popular in its day, but has sadly been pretty much forgotten by, uh, modern audiences. Uh, and I think it's because it's hard for them to kind of get why Smokey and the Bandit was a thing. Uh, you know, the whole concept of not being able to ship Coors beer to a certain place. I mean, I can't even imagine too many people even know what Coors beer even is at this point. Colorado beer, and oddly enough, for the longest, it was actually illegal to ship to here. So 1977, you got Saturday Night Fever, Eraserhead. Eraserhead holds up, but for all the weird reasons. I think you said a bridge too far. Yeah, we we covered that. The Spy Who Loved Me that that held up, but Bond film. Although with the Bond films, they kind of feel like little time capsules of their age in many respects. Because like you look at Goldfinger. And it's like, that is definitely a time capsule for the 1960s. <laughs> the Exorcist 2 did not hold up. No. Uh, no, it didn't. Uh, I don't know. I've not seen Blade Runner in many years, so I don't know if that holds up or not. And yeah, Dead Space is third-person Doom, and Alien 3 really did have horrible, horrible effects. I mean, Kingdom of the Spiders, clearly. <laughs> Kingdom of the Spider? I think I've heard of that. William yeah. Shatner versus Spiders. Uh, hey, was Night of it's the It's as crazy as it sounds. Was Night of the Lumpus a. Uh... You mean Lupus? I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> Whichever. The fucking giant uh, rabbit movie that had, you know, DeForest Ke Kelly in it. Lumpus? 
Rumpus, you know what? Like a bad no, no, no. <laughs> doctor. John has created a new meme here. This is actually this holds up better than quote unquote Big Chungus is a meme. No way. I think it's. Uh, when I, I don't know, when I say lupus, I just get the, the so you know. Oh, like I said, you, you inadvertently created an awesome meme which holds up better than, you know, the, the lame Big Chungus meme. I don't even right. know what that even supposed to be. It was, uh, it was Jim Sterling being stupid and it got attributed by the fans to, you know, a picture of Fat Bugs Bunny. Hmm. So I guess which, that's... Lumpus fits that much better. People are weird. I mean, oh, uh, did you hear about the new Alien 3 audiobook they're doing? Uh, Alien 3 audiobook? Uh, based off the good script. Oh, they're gonna do that. Okay, I thought they were just gonna make a comic. Yeah, Michael Bean and... Okay, okay. It might be worth checking out. I may have to acquire such things. And oh. Jacques, I've actually... Or you could just buy the goddamn thing and support them. <laughs> I could do that too. Uh, and Jacques, I uh, am aware of Adobe acquire... and their crap, which is why I use Sony Vegas. Sony Vegas version, whatever the fuck it is. Because, yeah, that is that even legal for them to do where they say, like, software you bought isn't, you know, legal to use? Well, here's the thing. It, as much as I dislike Adobe, and I really, really dislike Adobe, this actually isn't so much their fault. They're, the whole, you know, you could be sued thing, it's a case of they, right now, are facing discovery with Dolby, digital audio, and digital video effects. Some of their older... Uh, they, how it works is, licensing-wise, they were licensed to use Dolby products and Dolby... Uh, tech in their software for X amount of years. Well, that licensing for the older software is kaput. It's over. We're, uh, we're past the phase. So, I can't really blame Adobe on this because they are, they're going through a lawsuit right now and they're trying to protect other people from getting yanked into that lawsuit. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess Sony doesn't make Vegas. I don't know. Vegas something or other than I was able to get it cheap off of uh, a humble bundle. And the funny thing is, I know the person who developed the audio for Vegas back when it was a Sony product. Hmm. That could not have been easy. And Soul Cube. Actually, I'm planning on going into business with her. Oh, well, that works. <laughs> also, if we want to make sacrificial get portals, down to business. <laughs> sorry. We of course need. Of course, you realize by this point she would have to be like in her 50s, so, um... Nope. She so... worked on the Vegas project when she was young. Oh. Okay. Is she single? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> oh. Oh, dear. But anyway, moving right along. Okay, uh... Let's see. Valuable sacrificial pointers. Eternal torment as spoken of in the prophecy... I think prophecy's been misspelled. You will feast upon their souls. When opening sacrificial portals, it's important to remember, virgin blood is best. Hey, you know what? I just barely am not that. Goat blood must be no older than three days. Entrails must be removed and, appro and apportioned either before death or no later than 30 minutes. Candles must be sorted by tallest in the back to shortest in the front. Never the other way around. <laughs> Most important pentagrams must be drawn from the center to the outside and left to right. So... Yeah, I can't please... Sorry. Basically, we've got uh, demon neckbeards. I can't believe the scientists demon neckbeards. Meaning, a lot of people had to die to figure this out. Uh, well, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs, right? So we mentioned Jaws. I was and Duo came out like 1971 on TV. Holy shit! Yeah, God, that that, was, that movie one of the best feel like an early 70s movie. It's one of the best made-for-TV movies ever. Now what movie? Over. 1971? Uh, Duo. Duel? Duel. D-E-U-L. Because it doesn't ring any bells for me. It's the movie that kind of proves that Spielberg uh, knew his stuff. 
Oh, man versus that truck. One. Where are you hiding? <clears throat> Which somebody actually has the dual the pickup uh, pickup trucks the eighteen wheelers from Duel and has re completely restored them to what they look like in the movies. Wow, that's uh, that's some uh, dedication there. Here's what Doom would be like if the Doom Bible was completed. I think there's a mod that's trying to do that. That's a lot of work. Yeah, I think it's like in alpha at this point. I think it's called something something Tai Tingo or something along those lines. I saw it a number of years ago. Tai Tingo, yeah. T Tai, whatever. It's some fancy Greek lettering. <laughs> Remember, it Roots always came out in 1977. What came out in 77? Roots. Oh, that's another one of those things that had, that's aged remarkably well. I think the movie we'll all remember the most, The Love of Benji. <laughs> <laughs> or Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. Ooh, slap shot. Now there's a movie that actually is held up really well, given its subject matter and what it is. Wait, which movie? Slap shot. Oh, that hockey thing. Hockey thing. You know, hockey used to be much more popular than it is today. At least as far as I can tell. Hockey used to be a lot more brutal than it is today. Uh, I guess they don't allow the whole, you know, fighting and all the rest. Well, they sort of do, but they're, they're, there's decorum you have to follow. It's not, you know, okay, punch him till he's bleeding from the ears. <laughs> So wait, it's sort of like skating with ultimate fighting. Over here. Eh, sort of back then. That hockey movie that came out with uh, Sean William Scott was pretty good. Goon, I believe it was called. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I've never seen any of that. The At least I've that seen... was the last recent S movie I see on hockey that was pretty good. <laughs> Otherwise, the only other thing I can think of is like the Mighty. <laughs> yeah, I was oh. gonna say that's the only one I've seen. Yeah, a movie that did not did not hold up to memory too well from 1977. Tentacle start, starring John uh, Houston, Shirley Winters, and Henry Fonda. Contain access code for Lab A. Wait, do I have to listen to something to see that, or is that in just an email? That could be in an email. Security concerns. Increase your pin, pin one size. Lab A security. This is the audio log for Tony Bates. So those tentacles are standard September 20, giant octopus in the water movie. I spent the last four no, it's proto hentai. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> <it is. laughs> this is proving to be a real bitch yeah, of a glitch see. to work out. I've traced work through on every system I could think of and access the lab and continues to be problematic. Never heard of it. Being. I like a deep riser. That was pretty good. Time, but the database will not allow access rights to be granted to new visitors. And yeah, NASCAR used to be more brutal than it is today. Now it's just go fast, turn left. For IT staff and the eggheads. So if they need access to yeah, the lab 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 around the fritz, they can use the code 627 to bypass door security. All right, 627. End of log. See, I actually kind of like this. That held up. I actually got to see that in 620. Sweet. Um, let's see, where was I? Wizards? I actually got to see that uh, at the Alamo Draft House once. It only cost a buck to get in. <laughs> That's a steal. And if you haven't seen Wizards, ladies and gentlemen, it is a film worth watching because it is basically Drug Trip the movie. There was a lot of those. <laughs> it's Ralph Bakshi, and a lot of his stuff kind of is. Like, like, I mean, like, it is... I don't even know where you start with that. It has some shades of a uh, fantasy series called Sword, ugh, Sword of Shinora. In that, like, you know, there's a big nuclear war, and then you got elves and dwarves somehow coming to existence. And I, it has to be seen to be believed. Like, it is truly the drug trippiest movie of the 70s, in my opinion. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, but it is very drug trippy. Well, unless The Wall came out in the 70s, which I don't remember if it did or not. Uh, I think it came out later, but as in terms of drug trippy movie, Ralph Bakshi has movies in his catalog which are more drug trippy than Wizards. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, kind of hard to do. 
See, what's kind of funny about that is, like, if uh, Peter Jackson had made the uh, Lord of the Rings films, that would have been the only adaption of Lord of the Rings. It would be his... Uh, didn't he make two of them, or was it just the one? He did The Hobbit, and I don't know if he did another one. I'm, gonna, I'm really blanking right now. Because I know he did, like, Lord of the Rings 1. Like, The Fellowship of the Rings. I think there was... Uh, Return of the King, just because that's the one where if there, where there's a whip, there's a way, comes from. Uh, <laughs> it's the BDSM. Never mind. <laughs> it's the BDSM national anthem. No, not anymore. The BDSM national anthem is. I can see it. I can see it. I can see it. Oh my god. Oh my. No, <laughs> trust me. It's, it's gotten a lot less fun over the last few years. Oh yeah, you have seen... a question though. Has Battletech become SJWized or does no one care about it anymore to the point where not even the SJWs care? No, the SJWs don't care about it because they don't know about it. Okay, good. The only thing I can say that's gotten quote-unquote SJWized is the last strategy game has pronouns. Oh god. It's avoidable though. It's only for the main character. You ever yeah. heard of like Fritz, Fritz the Cat and stuff? There's a lot of weird seventies. Yeah, stuff. I got Fritz the Cat on DVD. Both uh, both movies. And then in the early eighties, they had like heavy metal. I've actually seen that. Heavy metal is kind of disappointing to me because like it's a movie about nothing. It's a show about yeah, nothing. but I don't know. It's well, it's really hard to take you know the magazine, which is still going by the way which is a collection of unrelated short stories and occasional continuities like uh, The Gypsy, which is one of my favorites. Hmm. And kind of boil it down to, okay, well, what makes Heavy Metal Magazine and let's make it into a movie. I mean, I think, like, if you were young in the theaters, that'd be cool, you know. Well, that kind of thing. Or high. <laughs> or both. Uh, and I don't really find it immoral. I mean, these aren't real infants. I think that fucking... the, uh, animation pretty cool today thing, you know, the whole animation. Grab, 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 grab. But yeah, uh, I know they remember, took... the abortion bill doesn't cover demons. <laughs> they took one of the stories and expanded it for, like, Heavy Metal 2, which is, like, some people like the sequel and other people don't. <laughs> Eh, fact 2 is interesting. I, I think it makes a better video game than it does a movie. Which I still need to play. And besides, if you think shooting demon infants in this game is bad, Dead Space 2 is much, much worse. Cause in there that, was a time... Sorry. No, I was going to say, in that, uh, you're actually shooting real infants that have been mutated by the necromorphs, and uh, then you have to face the pack, which are... Uh, basically necromorphized toddlers. Oops. Oh yeah, and there's infant bombs as well. There's Splatterhouse. Many. That's all I gotta say to that. So yeah, this is actually pretty tame compared to Dead Space 2. Which I'm gonna review at some point in the future. Uh, I'm actually gonna have my, my mother uh, cameo in that because there was a hilarious uh, ad campaign saying you were now of course I was already in college when that game came out, but like the ad campaign was your mother wouldn't want you to play this game. And I'm basically gonna have her play it and say like, okay, what's the big deal? Well, Cause it's not like you're shooting people, you're shooting fucking alien well, they're not really like alien zombies, but more or less. But go on. As for Splatterhouse, you're doing that to demonic babies with your bare hands, or with a 2x4, or a giant meat cleaver, or... I'm gonna not say what I want to say, simply because it's a real quick way to demonetization. Yeah. But that's the arcade game, right? Weren't the graphics screwed back then, too? Oh, that's all Splatterhouse yeah. titles. Uh, and Jacques, I, didn't, I don't really like Lord of the Rings that much to begin with, and when I saw Hobbit 1, I... I didn't think I'd like it to begin with, and I didn't. The big problem with Hobbit 1 is they really do go for that sweeping vistas! It's like nothing but sweeping vistas, and I just, uh, I didn't really get into it. It's a video travel brochure. And so, yeah, I mean, I can see why some would like it. 
but I didn't. So there's that. Oh, I was going to say in the 90s, uh, MTV had liquid television. That was mostly like weird animated shorts. Yeah, and there, there were quite a, good, quite a few good ones. Very artsy back in the the day. They even had yeah. a, that's where like AM Flux came from. It wasn't really about being artsy. It was more like, okay, let's just be as wild, weird, and strange as we can. Oh, yeah, that be. too. Yeah. That's actually something that's kind of interesting. Today, everything's so commercial to the point where everything has to be played absolutely safe. Uh, so you don't really see that kind of creativity anymore. Well, not on anything that's aired. It, you're going to have to search for it these days. It's still being made, but you have to dig for it. You had to dig for it back then, too, but you know, you had companies that were willing to take a chance. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why most of the new IPs and a lot of the old ones are just so generic. They want to play it as safe as it's humanly possible. But yeah, it's video games especially. It's down to, if it doesn't do well on focus test, they don't do it. Mm. That is just sad. Speaking of, you know, like things getting much more generic, or things getting SJWI. I was thinking about that today for some reason. Comedy Central, if there's one channel that has gone down in quality like more than any other, it's that one. Because there was a time when Comedy Central had this thing called comedy on it. Uh, it's a strange concept, I know, but when you think about They've been what... going downhill since 93. It's been a straight down decline. The only thing they're holding on to right now is South Park. Which I'm surprised they air, because basically, is it Comedy Central at this point just a channel that has SJW propaganda on it, if we're reasonable? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a gaggle of turbo leftists. It's nothing but propaganda except for South Park. So, it's like, because I remember, I remember uh, Comedy Central started getting really bad around 2006, when they really got political. I mean, like, superly overt... Superly is now a word, by the way. Like, superly overt, overtly political. And honestly, it wasn't that, much, that, that good to begin with. Once they lost, uh... Mystery Science Theater. In the 90s, it was good. Like, 93 to 99. It's freaking awesome. And then it just went straight downhill. Yeah, just about all those classic, uh, you know, cable channels went down, like, you know, History Channel stopped having history and instead had Pawn Stars. I know people like that show, but it annoys me. And then you have, and then, like, Axemen and all the rest. And then, like, A&E, you know, Arts and Entertainment. Instead, we, of course, have no art Wait. and no entertainment, just, like... Did you say Axemen? What? That's... That's a thing. It, it's... Yeah. It's basically, hey, let's follow some lumberjacks. Okay. It's when you think of a bunch of, like, I don't know, pompous assholes with, like, axe body spray. Okay, that would be hilarious. <laughs> Trying to, like, pick up chicks and stuff. So, basically, axe Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. And hello, Silver Wings. So, Comedy Central is CNN 2.0? Yes, pretty much. That's uh, okay, because CNN's, you know, going down the crapper. They had, this last week, they had the lowest ratings they have ever had since their inception. That's actually another kind of crazy concept. You know, there was a time when, like, CNN and, like, MSNBC could have actually been seen as reputable news sources, but now they're basically a joke. Well, they were a joke back then, too. Remember, 93? Actually, we'll go back to 92 for this one, to be 100% oh. honest. Uh, CNN had faked war footage from the Iraq war. Huh. I mean, the, the worst... When I say they had the worst rating since their inception, I mean it. When they were incepted in the 1980s, not everybody had cable. The entirety of Chicago didn't have cable. Most of California didn't have cable. They had... To get cable back then in the early 80s to mid-80s was not easy. And Chicago didn't get cable till the 90s. Hmm. The mid-90s. Yeah, I heard something like uh, these 24-hour news stations are struggling to keep up with the, you know, the internet. But, like, they'll just do whatever a clickbaity thing would be able to watch. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be clickbaity if it's live news, but you know what I mean. Live news, baby. Yes. Eh, that's what they like to do these days. That's what everything does, though. 
I'm actually tempted to do a clickbaity thing myself for Knights of the Old Republic 1 when I review it. Is Knights of the Old Republic 1 still good? As the video title. And then literally before the intro, I just pop up and say, yes. Then just cut to credits. You gotta do the right thumbnail. Like that time you held up that knockoff game thing and with your shocked O face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that worked. That got something like 300 views. <laughs> I felt my soul die a little bit, but you know. Hey, it's still more views than Rachel Maddow gets. You have a soul? Yeah, it's somewhere. Your soul is mine. I think I lost she mine somewhere in, in Mexico. But I'm sure you could get it again for just a few bucks. The exchange rate isn't that bad yet. Yes. Find him. Gotta find him. My gun. He's got my gun. And Jocks, Tim Pool is always at least one week late. In this case, he was about mm, a year late. <laughs> uh, of course, we're talking about calls. Uh, Pluto TV. It's like uh, they stream a bunch of channels, kind of like cable, like free. You can watch on demand stuff, but. Buy a combat them, so like they added like Comedy Central and stuff. They actually they'll show like the ninety stuff, which is kinda cool. Hmm. Interesting. And yeah, Even like nineties watch... Nickelodeon stuff, but yeah. I that like they're playing like Strangers with Candy, which is a show I vaguely even remember. And I never heard of it. Of it's like what's good, but I miss the vacant lot. And I've never heard of that either. No one has. It's a. It was a very small, very niche Canadian comedy troupe, which got utterly bested by kids in the hall in terms of ratings. They even have a channel with nothing but MST3K and riff tracks. Speaking of like those old Comedy Central shows, that does remind me of something from the early 2000s. Oh yeah, here's something that a lot of uh, the younger viewers will know about. Is like they used to have a TV guide channel. That would like scroll through the channel saying what was on them. I think they still do. Some some do, but I can you want I can add a bit of trivia to that. You know what ran that TV guide channel and preview channel for so long from 1991 up until 2009? Hmm. Amiga 2000. <laughs> that is insane. See, oh. what's, what's kind of interesting about that though is like. Around that time, when it was kind of when, when it was dying out, I found it kind of weird that they kept showing the same sequences over and over again. Because like, they, they, one of the last things I remember seeing on there was one of the TV Guide people. Because like they had like TV Guide anchors. It was like getting some makeup applied to look like a Zindi from Star Trek Enterprise. And when they were they were still showing that like five years after Enterprise had ended. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I said, that hardware, they were using the same hard drive platters and the same computers for almost, you know, a good solid decade and a half. So when I had cable, it was like late 90s, early millennium, otherwise with TV, and then uh, when Ash vs. Evil Dead Season 1 came out, it was only available on cable. I was like, God damn it, I'll get cable package if I have to, so I got some free deal for a few months, watched it, but you know, had the box hooked up and stuff, and I did not miss that at all. It was so slow, so clunky, you couldn't remove the channels, you didn't have, because you know, they want to get you to add them channels. Oh, so he goes for DirecTV. Yeah, it was terrible, like, like the streaming stuff is so much easier. Well, see, now oh, you can watch all the uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead on uh, Netflix. Well, so yes. Season 2 and Season 3, Star's finally added a streaming option. Okay. My big complaint is that there are certain channels that have almost no presence online. Like Sportsman's Guy channel. The Sportsman channel. I want that online. You can't right. get it online. Like, I, I know Swing TV has some, but yeah. I get what you're saying. I can get the Pursuit channel with their online presence. I don't, I don't even have to have cable for that. And I like that. But... Say I want to watch Meat Eater, which is basically hunting plus cooking on mm -hmm. sports, you know, Sportsman Channel. I can't do that, which annoys yeah. the heck out of me. 
I can definitely say that these days, now that like regular TV is not digital, you get so many channels. Tenet. Well, here's the rub when it comes to digital yeah. versus analog. Okay. You can get there, there, through speaking just on a scientific level. If things had gone different and we'd gone with HDTV over analog over the air signal, you know, standard uh, terrestrial broadcast. You can do that. You can get actually good, you know, 4K out of the bandwidth that you would over terrestrial. Problem is, we didn't go that route, so we lost a lot of things. Yes, digital is nice, but it has cost us a lot when it comes to communications because terrestrial over the air broadcast is actually a really stable network. Right. It's and pretty also, hard to one up the Earth's ionosphere. If you're in a bad location, you'll get static and stuff on analog. Digital, you just get it all. So, no, you you can get. There are certain areas you, in the U.S. Right. that you can go to. You cannot get a digital signal. You cannot get an analog signal. That's the reason why cable got so big. It's because well, there's no there's no worry about what the Earth's ionosphere when you're running a direct line. Yeah. And I know next they're good. They will do uh, eventually 4K signals that'll acquire a new tuner. Be moving to MPEG 4. So right now, digital TVs using MPEG 2. Yeah, but here's also the rub. They are going. <laughs> a lot of rubbing going on. <laughs> it's because actually this is a multifaceted subject. Um, when it does go to 4K, you can expect them to buy, you know, media companies like Comcast, NBC, uh, AT&T with DirecTV, Dish Network, and the cable subscribers to buy more of the terrestrial bandwidth, mm. which sucks because that's radio bandwidth. That's actually kind of important. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Speaking of radio, yeah, HD radio, how, like, how's that, you know? Actually, here's the funny thing. HD radio, if you're wanting, you know... The you're gonna look at me funny. You're gonna think I'm an absolute madman. You want the best radio experience you can get right now? It's being ignored across the nation. AM radio. Um, you mean like through the HD radio technology, or just analog AM radio? Analog AM radio, when done right, and you're close to a proper receiver, mm-hmm. you're getting audio file. You know, streaming right there. I should clarify bored. that HD radio actually isn't high definition. It's digital FM. It's all yeah. It. Well, all FM is digital. That static right. you hear when you're dialing in with FM radio, that's piped in. But I mean, technically, HD audio would be like 24 bit, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you can get. You're not. Okay, here's the. And that's, here's the yeah, most people can't even tell the difference. No, it's not even that. Because okay. you buy a good set of headphones. You can yeah. tell the difference. Right now, I'm wearing a set of causes because it's, this is mic'd up. But if but there was like a I'm... difference, because, like, what the hell happened to uh, this whole HD audio crap? Because, like, there was a it's time in the cool. early millennium when, like, Cradle was trying to, like, push 24-bit audio, but, like, there's no games that use 24-bit audio that I can think that of. That's because they don't care. You want to talk 24-bit audio, you're talking lossless files. You're talking FLAC, at least. Yeah, and I You're will, talking super audio CD. I will admit there is, there is a noticeable... God damn it. There is a noticeable difference between a FLAC and an MP3. Even I'll admit that. Well, but, FLAC is uh, for quote-unquote lossless audio, which it is genuinely lossless. It's just how it's encoded is what matters. You're going to see FLAC is the lowest on the totem pole. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, normally the headphones I use are a set of Sennheisers. Oh, I forgot the BFG. Ah, eh, well, it doesn't matter. I never use it anyway. Yeah, like I own like zero. Like, I don't know. I just don't care anymore. I'll just stream audio. That's oh. that's essentially what's <laughs> causing the death of HD audio, and well, rather well, not the death, the stagnation. It's kind of their own fault because uh, it should have been more universal. We put in the stuff. Like I bought a new uh, 
receiver, uh, you know, around sound, and it, it didn't even have a, a HD FM tuner built in, you know? Well, you're I not going to get uh, that. You have to buy that specially. Right. I think it, I think it's because uh, they should have went with some kind of open standard. Well, it's not, it's not even standard-wise. It's not an expensive standard to set up to. It's the fact that when faced with something, people don't want the best of anything. They want the most of anything, the best of nothing. They will go for cheap and easy. Yeah, it's like MP3. Because, like, with MP3, you know, it sounds decent enough and you can pack a lot of files onto uh, one system. <laughs> so, you know, like, with FLAC, you know, one album is, like, four or five hundred megabytes, whereas, actually, I think it's even bigger than that. But like when compared to like uh, you know, MP3, MP3s barely take up any space at all. So yeah, it was like initially MP3, then like when Apple came along with iTunes, that was like AAC or whatever. Yeah, uh, iTunes. Uh, I here's the thing, iTunes was and still is just their own version of MP3. It's just recoded. It's not AAC. And WAV files? I don't files? think I've ever heard of WAV files. I remember when Creative came out with their MP3 player, and I was like, a giant hard drive to carry around. Yeah, that was a weird thing that, uh, you know, that got outmoded pretty fast with SD cards, but yeah, a lot of the uh, iPods did have hard oh. drives, like 80 gigabyte oh, hard drives. Yeah. The Creative Nomad. And see, back in those days, all I had was a uh, RCA Lyra. With uh oh you get the you still can still get the FG. I didn't know it was there. But yeah. I went with the Can I go on? Oh I went with a uh MP three C D player. I just burned the MP threes on the C D and it would like catch memory and the C D would stop spinning. It played that way. You know, I'd heard of those. I just never I just never really invested in it though. I just had the, you know little two fifty six megabyte thing. I thought that was awesome. Like, you could put more music on there and take some of it off. Although, I will admit, I was kind of a late adopter of the CD player. And then once I realized I could burn my own CDs, it was like, oh my god, you can put different music onto a CD. That means I could have ACDC, Black Sabbath, and ZZ Top <laughs> all on the same CD. <clears throat> what techno sorcery is this? What's really fun is when you find that weird technology, like, cassettes that you can sort MP3s onto. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. Digital wonder... audio cassettes. Yeah. That mini-disc. Mini-disc was actually pretty good, but it, it bombed horribly here in the States. Last <laughs> action hero couldn't save it. It's like mini Nothing can save it here in the U.S. Can I go on? Nothing can save it here in the U.S. <laughs> oh, I had a friend who would always have me Oh crap, if he had a ninja player, uh, bought that Nokia game console phone thing too. Oh, the, oh, the taco phone one. Yeah, the Engage, yeah. Yeah, see what's kind of funny about the Engage is like, that's one of those things that is truly a product of its time. Because like, the Engage is like the most, I see what they were trying to do. They wanted to try to come. That was like. You could almost say it's like a primitive version of a smartphone in some respects. Because it did have a lot of smartphone y kind of things, and it still functioned as a phone, so. It was that weird time period where it had like PDAs. Yeah, PDAs. Well, I had one, I'll admit it, but mine was for working on paintball markers. Ah, uh, the PDA. I mean. I don't miss it. Doom 3 thought they'd still have it in the 23rd century. Well, we kind of still do. We have tablets. Uh, let's see. Crush 40. Uh, was that the uh, people who did that Sonic thing? I think so. <clears throat> uh, whose chair is squeaking the wings of redemption? Hey, for once, it's not me. <laughs> uh, this thing is, I've got an old chair and I'm too broke to buy another one. And Rain is just a very squeaky person. But Truger's just a basic villain. He's not as bad as he could be. 
but he's just kind of there to drive the plot. I mean, there's a lot of good background on him in, in like the audio logs and stuff like that. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, he's just, you know, the devil equi equivalent to like, you know, Satan equivalent to like an assistant. Okay, so demonic here's... Demonic bureaucrat. Oh, crap, 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 crap. I am so dead. Yep. I was right. Uh, how useful is Spotify? I've never actually used Spotify. Oh, I can speak for that one. Uh, Spotify, is, uh, the free version, uh, on your desktop, you can listen to, like, almost any album for free with a few ads. And then on your phone, they'll put it in a shuffle mode. But if you want to download the music, you pay ten bucks a month and you can download whatever. Uh, I but know. I use it for the music discovery too. I discovered several band stuff that I would have normally known of. And I'm all the way back here. Ugh. You know, every time you mention Spotify Rage, I keep thinking that maybe one day I should actually try it. And the, the reason oh, I you did. <laughs> I might have, and just oh I yeah, mean, I think I did. But then I, I just didn't like the ads, and I didn't want to pay the ten bucks. But actually, like, legitimately try it for one major reason, that music discovery, because I'm sick of everything that I listen to. Because for work, I can listen to music while I work, and it's uh, it's like eight hours a day, right? Or ten hours a day sometimes. And, you know, I've got three playlists, no, ten playlists, actually, of eight hours apiece, and I'm sick of all the music on every single playlist. And you can only listen to Sabaton for so many times, you know, it's like... And I just don't know of any new music that I actually want to listen to. And for failed consoles, uh, the CD32 and PCFX actually aren't failed consoles. They failed in the US because one could not be sold here illegally, and the other was never brought here legally, but they did alright. And for me, I just, when it came to the, comes to consoles, the only console I truly want to get at some point is a Neo Geo. And that's just to have it, you know, to have a Neo Geo AES. It's utterly useless. Well, it's not useless, but it's like, it is not worth the money that that, that it would take to buy it. Uh, it. Yeah, you can easily emulate it, uh, but if you're going to AES, uh, wait just a little bit because the new multi-carts are coming out and they're seeing hardware, well, not hardware, but actually you know, firmware revisions. Uh, Multicarts are not cheap, I'll warn you there. They cost as much as the system. I am not surprised. The Neo Geo was always expensive. I mean, you'd have to have been one lucky bastard to have grown up with that, but that would have been like the best console, like, ever. Uh, I didn't grow up with it. I mean, I was growing, but I bought it with my own money that I earned. Well, that must have taken a little bit of time taking a while to do because the thing was like what like eleven hundred dollars in like 1990s money uh 1990s money it cost me right at about four hundred dollars for the console and 250 dollars for a copy of samurai showdown 2 and 230 for a copy of fatal fury uh special my god whatever you did is a uh... I don't even know how old you would have been at that time, but you used to work a lot of hours for that. That's a lot of lawns mowed over two <laughs> summers. Did you mow the entire state? Pretty much. Every day I was out pushing a mower. Mm. And then, thanks to Clinton, now for the <coughs> business. I mean, uh, wait, that'd be Raycast. Huh. Dude, I remember when I had like mow lawns for my uncle get money to buy my first TVD player. Sorry. <laughs> That's cool. Memory. <laughs> By that time I was, you know, working fast food, so. Well, for me, all I had to do was mow my grandparents' lawn, but I still hated that. Here's a pro tip. Never mow grass in sandals. I was unaware of this the first time I did it, and yes, that was very unpleasant. You ended up a fire ant, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that wasn't fun. I don't. I don't haven't seen any fire ants in years, though. When I was a kid, they used to be all over the place. Now it's just like regular tree ants that I come across. I don't know. It's like do they all like die off or something. 
No, oh no. Go to Hell, Texas, go to here. You'll find out they're quite alive. Uh, well. And this past weekend, I had to poison an entire freaking mound of them. How could you? They're Mother Earth. But I'm not even going to finish that statement. They're one of Mother Earth's most horrible creatures. No, not most horrible, but definitely most annoying. Ants here are just kind of regular. I mean, it's weird. They used to be all. That's one of the reasons why I stopped walking in grass barefoot. Is I remember when I used to do that as a kid. Ugh. Every goddamn time I step at something. Most unpleasant. Seven games for the Neo Geo AS. Cyberlip. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, you know, I do have a second Dreamcast, but it died, unfortunately. And yeah. That's okay. If it's a Model 1, it can be repaired and brought back to life. And made better. Yeah, I think you mentioned that, uh, uh, the uh, SD card thing. And greetings, uh, Renan. <coughs> but I was actually kind of lucky uh, as a kid mowing the grass here just because we had a uh, self motivating mower. Which is a fancy way of saying, like, it had a little, like, like it would move under its own power. Yeah, it's those kick ass. Uh, those kick ass till you start getting to hills. Thankfully, mm. well, uh, Houston is flat. I live on flat land, so. <laughs> for you, Donkey. <laughs> Very much so. I mean, remember, I'm living in Minden at this time, which is for Louisiana. That's hill country. <laughs> Every freaking lawn is on a freaking hill. A hill? What? What is such thing? Now we're talking. Okay, lawns flat, lawns flat, lawns flat, and suddenly a negative 45 degree decline. So if you got a motivating mower, I think it's just pulling, and you're trying to, like, okay, don't pull yourself so hard with the mower's blades at 45 degrees <laughs> towards yeah, the ground. Uh, yeah. Now, herein lies an interesting question, though. Is that the Doom Slayer? Is this sort of like it? Well, it's, it's not referencing the Doom Slayer because the concept didn't exist. But can we retcon this guy as the Doom Slayer? Oh, uh, it's sort of written that way. And the funny thing is, as it's written, that's actually supposed to be Flynn Taggart as the Doom Slayer. Hmm. So is the Doom Slayer, you know, actually Flynn Taggart, or is it just some other guy? No, it's Flynn. There needs to be a novelization of Doom 2016 where, like, they explicitly say that's the case. No, they never will be, but essentially the storyline goes, Doom 1, 2, and Doom 64, the stories of Flynn Taggart, he stays in hell, he becomes the Doom Slayer. And we're just random Doom guy that doesn't stay in hell, thankfully. Right. Oh yeah, one of my fanfics that I'm actually thinking about rewriting had me pick up the Doom guy to actually take over a Super Star Destroyer. Alongside Delta Squad and uh, Blue Team from uh, Halo. I'll admit, I kind of made that team a little OP. But I thought, you know, you got like a ship that has like a crew of like 40,000. You know, you'd need like a bunch of FPS characters to take it down. Actually, I think a Super Star Destroyer has more than 40,000. I think it's closer to like 50, 60, something like that. 40,000's a skeleton crew. Of course, what exactly does that 40,000 even do? I mean, shouldn't most of that be automated in, you know, Star Wars? Yeah, that's actually another good question. Like, what exactly... Okay, so you've got, say, the Ronald Reagan, right? That has a crew of 5,000. What do they do? What, what, what exactly does all of them do? I just... I never really... For the most part, maintenance. It may be automated, but guess what? Those systems have, still have to be monitored, maintained, and kept up. Mm. A lot of it's engineering. Like, one of my old bosses from Namco, Steve, Noah will not mention his last name because number one, doxing, and number two, national security. Right now, he's on a sub. He went from, you know, breaking for Namco to enlisting Navy and becoming a nuclear <laughs> technician on a sub. No, I cannot reveal where the sub is. No, I will not reveal his last name. Well, his, his every day is monitoring that reactor and making sure everything is working at top performance. 
And that cannot be fun. Hey, you kill all the survivors and nobody cares, at least in half like <clears throat> NPCs will turn against you if you do. Captain Gold, do you just like to like roll lobs with your half lifeness? <laughs> yes. Because half life sucks. I mean, it's great. It's both. Yeah. There's parts of it which are great, there are parts of it which suck donkey. I'll say this. I'm glad I missed it back in the day. It just is... play the first game in Black Mesa. Black Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an opposing force. And Black <laughs> Dale Gribble? I don't know what that's a reference to. If you're gonna play the second game, just play co op. Oh, Make I know what that's a reference to. <laughs> uh, uh, back to 90s television. If you want a 90s sci fi experience, check out the Comet channel. It literally plays like Babylon 5 at the limit. <clears throat> this yeah. sounds worth watching. Babylon 5 is way better than. It should have been though, when you think about it. You know, you can even still... stream it. It's like watch comment, I think of the website. I've Sorry, seen a few I'm things on that. No, I was just saying like <laughs> Babylon Five. You know, it was made on like a super low budget, filmed in an old hot tub factory. With I think Rain, you mentioned that like the the, the, the graphics were like from an Amiga or something. Yeah, an Amiga one thousand. With a video toaster. So it's like that show. I will actually contend that while the CGI in that looked bad even for the time, it was actually better in some respects than Star Trek. Because while Star Trek used physical models, the physical models were very limited in what they could do. And so you couldn't see ships, you know, like, extend a grappling hook to pick up another ship. That, that just wasn't going to happen. But in uh, Babylon 5, you could see that with CG. Yeah, it didn't look very good, but at least you got to see it. Well, it was the first season that was done with uh, Amiga 1000. I remember the first season that was made and edited on a machine which cost roughly about $2,500 that anybody could buy. I mean, you could, you could walk into a shop and pick up an Amiga with a video toaster for about $2,500 and get to editing pretty damn quick. Now... The you know the next real big advent of CGI was the SGI graphics computers used in you know, episode one, two, and three of Star Wars, which those you could not. Those were <laughs> those were stupid expensive. They were talking uh, thirty thousand dollars plus. And uh, Donkey Kong also made use of those as well. Yep. One of the reasons why that game looks so good. Although I will contend that Donkey Kong 2 looks a lot better than Donkey Kong on the graphics are far sharper. And uh, the levels are a little more complex as well. And that's because they're actually, at that time, they had moved on from the Onyx systems to. Uh, I can't remember which system they moved up to, but they, they invested in even more into SGI, which is a company, not, you know, an acronym for, oh, it's. No, Silicon Graphics Incorporated. They invested into the higher end PCs past that. How they went from the Onyx to their workstation PCs, which allowed them to get the renders at a higher resolution much quicker. And it shows. My only problem with the uh, 90s Donkey Kong games is that after Donkey Kong 1, you never actually get to play as Donkey Kong anymore. Because uh, you play as Diddy in the second one. And in the third one, you play as either Dixie or, uh... Trixie? Oh, it's no not way. Dixie. Is it Trixie or Dixie? I don't remember. It was Dixie Kong. Yeah, yeah, I actually got it right. What oh, the fuck was I thinking of? I don't know. What Sorry, happened? I'm having a senior moment. What would happen to Candy Kong? You're younger though? than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's had a hard life. It's a hard life. He had to watch too many shitty shows and fell to his brain. What? No, clearly there's science by watching crap your brain. Oh, crap. Oh. Love you, love you, love you, love you. <laughs> you know, those trites or the mites or whichever one those things are, you know, they're not that tough to kill, but, you know, they always come in such oh. numbers and they have just enough that they can hit you when you don't reload. Okay, I'm not completely insane. There is a Trixie Kong. Yes. 
but not in that, those games. Uh, I have Actually, played Spin Co-op. It's yeah. okay. Uh, why did they make you fail? That should be an interesting answer. I have no idea why. Halo versus Halo Covenant versus the Combine and Sand Creatures. Uh, I think I'd still put my money on Covenant. I thought the final levels of Doom 3 were boring. Yeah, I thought they were okay. And we're seeing Doom 1, 2, and Quake 1. Let's get Terminator Monster Quake 2. You know, I'd like to see those as well. Because I happen to like the uh, Quake 2 engine. And the Quake 2 level design as well, so... It's kind of interesting when you think about those SGI workstations. They were $30,000, and yet, you know, this computer here, and it's not even a particularly powerful computer, you know, could create something far superior to that. Yeah, it, your average, you know, even mid-range computer is 10 to 20 times more powerful. And that's just... It's one of those things where, like... The professional grade computers of today will basically be less powerful than phones in, you know, like 20 years. Oh yeah, that's best case example. The smartphone that's in your pocket is more powerful than the entire computing, you know, every last scrap of computing power that NASA had during the Challenger missions. And that in and of itself, well... There is that famous picture of that 5 megabyte hard drive being loaded onto a uh, jet. And like it's half the. Well, it's not like half the size of the jet, but it's massive. Like they gotta have a fucking forklift for that thing. Oh crap, I don't have any fucking. Yeah, back in my youth, hard drives were the size of anchors. I don't like the uh, Commodore 64 hard drive. No, it wasn't the hard drive, I think it was the uh, disk drive. It was like the size of a shoebox. Yeah. That was single-sided, single-density, uh... Five-and-a-quarter-inch sloppy. Yeah. You kids today don't know how good you have it. Why, back in my day, Doom 3 would have been considered the fever dream of a madman. It pretty much was. Hell, Doom 1 could be considered a fever dream of a madman at one point. Okay, so I need to go over here. I don't know where the other crap is. But one thing that's rather interesting about Donkey Kong 1, though, is that for a game made before most of you have even been born at this point, you know, it holds up surprisingly well. Uh, Donkey Kong Country? <laughs> I'll say the original Donkey Kong. It <laughs> held up. It still holds yeah. up. I mean, have you... Tribes. I have never played Tribes. Oh, but that I'm was my jam back in the day. Tribes. Thankfully, the games are free, so yeah, you can get all the tribes games right now if you want. You know, I didn't even know those existed until you know somewhat recent. Well, somewhat recently, yeah, ten years ago. Am I missing a uh, PDA somewhere in here? I must be because I don't think I picked anything up. I'm gonna blame the chat. Uh, I was gonna say, have you seen the King of Kong? <laughs> But didn't they find out that the guy, uh, whatever the hell his name was, ended up cheating, though? Oh, yeah. Was well, like... the guy that was already the champion, right? Yep. He is now completely barred from Twin Galaxies. Not that that's sake much, but... <laughs> he can't go to the... Uh... Which means that Billy Mitchell... Well, did he win guys in the documentary? Ever. Uh, Billy Mitchell is completely disbarred from... Of posting his high scores anywhere. Ah, uh, yeah, I meant the other guys. Uh, Steve Webby. Steve yeah. Webby, yeah, he was officially the winner for a while. Now, the there's actually a doctor who is replaced the current is currently the new king of Kong. He's no longer just the regent. Uh, I hope there's not a porn parody. <laughs> the king of Dong. You know, I'm sure... You're so cheating! You're using extends! <laughs> oh god, that's just horrible. <laughs> oh yeah, well you're cheating! You're using a freaking pump! Oh my, okay, okay, that could be hilarious if someone actually made that a comedy parody. Uh, of a know, documentary made in 2007. <laughs> I could write it, but getting it to actually be filmed would be the hard part. I mean, 
<laughs> Hard. Coming soon to <laughs> Bang Bros. King of Dog. <laughs> I say, if you want, I can write it up. So, you know, a full script standard to have it you know, just be a complete and utter disaster piece of a comedy. Only if Lost is the part of it. Wait, what? <laughs> I cannot guarantee <laughs> casting. That's not my role. I can write. Lost, recite this dialogue. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, uh, if you could somehow make it legal for Hitomi to perform, oh, I could do that. Uh, but, alas, the like... The legal the... part, yeah, I suppose, but I mean, there's nothing illegal, unless you decide she wants to retire, in which case, due to Japanese laws, at five years after retirement, the studios lose all the footage for. No, that's just not fair. Mm. And actually, uh, I question this fan. As long as we don't have to like change the subtitle, call the King of Kong a fistful of quarters. <laughs> Why don't you put, if you put the fistful no, no. in this uh, parody, Fist? it's going to be a whole different oh, kind of thing. No, oh, simple, simple way around that. King of Dong, a fistful of condoms. <laughs> well, that, that actually works even better. Okay, I must have missed something. <laughs> Let's see, killing for one map, we got Detective 3, killing for two. Yeah, that kill nobody in this live stream expected we'd go there. <laughs> Surprise, uh, folks! <laughs> see, I could technically, if you could get to tell me if you just uh, censored all the uh, general areas. The, no, they, she can work in the US. <coughs> you have to write up a contract, but she can work uncensored in the US. Hmm. I was see, if, Ho if Hollywood would adapt our ideas, then they wouldn't be out of originality. <laughs> Well, I could probably write this as a, you know, an arable, R-rated comedy akin to, like, Orgasmo or something like that. <laughs> no, you have to write it as a heartfelt drama. Oh, that's gonna be tough. <laughs> that would probably make a more hilarious act. Oh, I could do comedy. Drama is hard. <laughs> hard. Romantic comedy. Where he, fall <laughs> where he falls in love. Okay, this did not open up. So why did those idiots teleport in here? I don't understand it. I, this always gives this always gave me trouble back in the day, and it's giving me trouble now. Everybody's still and talking. And jocks about... for the Tetris champion. I don't know who the current one eh, current one was, but I know for the longest the Game Boy Tetris champion was Steve Wozniak. What? Yeah, he and Nintendo Power actually had to put put a shadow ban on him back in the day. I guess he just kept t hitting the top high scores constantly. I did not expect that. Is he still alive or is he dead? Yeah, he's still alive. He's still kicking. Okay, you just never really hear about him anymore. It's because he likes to live a private life. He's pretty much the only of the the only person that was uh, originally with Apple that anyone ever hears about these days is uh, Steve Jobs. So I guess he had a better marketing I've department. I've heard of Wozniak. I've seen him do. I think also... Hey, no, go on. You can go look at the old Nintendo Power Jocks, and you can see Steve Wozniak, or he'll reverse his name when he realized he was shadow banned. Wozniak, Steve. Okay, so that did not open. Okay, what the hell? Well, it's kind of interesting when it comes to, like, uh, marketing and publicity. You know, you have people who are just as influential as someone else, but you never hear of them because their uh, marketing department wasn't quite as good. The best case in point is, uh, you know, Stan Lee and uh, Steve Ditko. It's like, you, everyone was sad about Stan Lee, but no one actually cared about Steve Ditko. Well, no one but, like, the super fans cared about Steve Ditko when he died. I think they died pretty close together, too. Yeah, and to that I'll say Jack Kirby. Hmm. <coughs> I remember around the time when that Ashton Kutcher Steve Jobs movie came out. I think it was like Funny or Die about Justin Long. They did some parody. I think it was just called I, Steve. It was like really ridiculous and stupid. See, my problem with that Steve Jobs thing is like, I saw the trailer. It basically made him look like tech Jesus. He was a salesman. He wasn't anything tech-wise. He was I a good the salesman. The only Steve Jobs movie I've seen was one with Bill Gates, the Pirates of Silicon Valley that came out on TNT back in the late 90s. 
And also this level here uh, is a level seen in uh, Alien Swarm. There's actually a mission you gotta do where you gotta like hold the little elevator here. Ah, uh, Alien Swarm. I need to play that again at some point. And for those who don't know Alien Swarm, it's uh, a free game on Steam that's basically just a top-down uh, multiplayer shooter. It's pretty good. Quite good. I just never got it to really work with multiplayer. I need to figure out how to do that port forwarding thing. I've needed to know mm. that for years, and I still don't know. For what game? Uh, for just about Alien any, Swarm. Alien Swarm, just about any game that actually has like some kind of multiplayer, or like something done with virtual land. <clears throat> so yeah, I remember getting attacked on this, but I guess I don't. I guess. Don't? I get a spree gun attack here. Maybe I'm thinking of like resurrection people. Oh, no, crap. BFG 9000! Oh. You know, the original Doom's BFG was nice, but you know, that BFG in this game, it's just. There's something about it that I like. I think I might actually be able to finish the game today. I think. No, I'm not. Because there's a lot more uh, we gotta fight through to get to that point. And how long have we been going? 1 hour 16? I think I can finish another mission. System Shock 2, I still need to play that at some point. I played a little bit of it, but not much. The <laughs> Night Dive re release is actually quite good. We should do a co op sometime. Yeah, if we ever had the time. Ugh. And yes, I do have the Xbox version of Resurrection of Evil along with the PC version. But I'm going to. Uh, live stream this after um, this game here. But uh, it's a three player co-op. That's random. Did you think it would be like four player? Uh, personally I think it's gone the list of like, in my opinion, one of my favorite co-op games ever. And yet I've still never played it. I, I know that the... I almost said the Steve Jobs game. The, uh, system shock age, shock age are really held in high regard, but I didn't know they existed back in the day, and... Well, that's because they were underrated. Uh, I think System Shock 2 came that's... Hmm. System Shock 2 sold okay, but it was out, outshined by a lot of other games, and System Shock 1 was hopelessly screwed in terms of sales. Yeah, that's what happened to all of those. Games of that sort. Uh, to, do you have the expansion? Okay. Two. Unity version. Steve Jobs, the official video game. <laughs> and yes, the game just crashed because, of course, it did. And I hadn't saved like an oh, idiot. Shit. This is not my as original for, copy of this either. We go on? As for Steve Jobs' game, I think there is a PC tycoon. I'm bug you from my experience a few years back. Wait, this game or the Steve Jobs game? Uh, let's see, maybe I can just do the map select. Uh, but then again, uh, I might just... And Crow, uh, Bill Gates only released really one line of PCs, quote-unquote. He, and he didn't even release that. That was, he licensed it out. That's the MSX series. Now what's funny, oh wait, I wonder if I should spoil that, never mind. Let's see, one second. Uh, Crow, it's not really getting a Linux kernel, per se. I mean, it's getting, it's got Bash Shell right now, and it is getting certain parts of, you know, it's getting a Linux distro for Windows, which okay. ironically you can run Windows in Linux better off. Um, the one thing people forget is over the past few years, Microsoft has, for better or worse, I'm going to go with worse here, they've paid a lot to get in on the board of directors of Linux. That's probably not going to end well. Uh, yeah, if you want to go to like a keynote speech, you're talking, you know, you're spending five thousand dollars to go to um, a convention to go to a keynote speech, 
and most of all of the big keynotes are paid for by Microsoft. So uh, it's yeah. All right, see you, skeptical. Project Take care. Brutality 3.0. Yeah, I haven't played any Project Brutality in like a long time. Just haven't had time for just, you know, casual gaming. Oh, speaking of casual gaming, Rage 2. I did pick that up, uh, I think last week is when it came out. My, I'm going to review it next year along with Rage 1. But, my initial impression is it's so generic, it's great. Uh, everything about it is utterly generic and extremely, well, safe. Uh, ah, so it it no. will actually ship with the Linux kernel, but it, they're claiming GPL. I don't think they're going to be claiming full copy left. Hmm. I have no clue. I've just... I have not used Linux. I tried once and failed. But then again, that was over a decade ago. But I just don't see any reason to do that right now. Just because it's not going to do anything. It's not going to run, you know, the stuff I use any better than what I, what I have now. But that being said, though, Rage 2, it runs quite well on this system. I'm getting like 60 FPS, and it's not necessarily maxed out, but the graphics fidelity is still pretty high. Uh, the gameplay is actually pretty complex. The only problem is it's just a little too easy, even when played on hard. But overall, uh, it's a vast improvement over the original Rage, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm surprised that Bethesda and id Software did as well with that as they did. I actually got a little bit of hope for Doom Eternal being good. A little hope. Not much, but a little. Uh, good game, yeah. Doom, nope. Until they start adding, you know, mod support and let your actual guns do the talking as opposed to... I'm going through the game with 97% kills done with my fists. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's like Doom Shiro. Oh yeah, speaking of anime, of the old animus, I've been watching more anime recently, just because they're nice, short episodes. Especially since I don't have that much time. I finally checked out, after talking about it on stream, I think you talked about it, uh, Rain, on stream, an anime that I saw that I saw on Toonami many years ago. Well, I saw advertised for Toonami many years ago. Thought it looked dumb and never gave it a chance. Well, I gave it a chance finally, and I finally sat through the first two episodes of Inuasha. And I gotta say, it was not as bad as I expected. However, no, I can see it. It starts out fine. I can see how they can melt. Uh, a hundred, no, like almost 200 episodes, because uh, for those who don't know anything about Inuasha, basically there's this magical gem thing that gets broken in like the second episode, and evidently they spend the entire series finding every single piece of that thing. Uh, I don't know how the rest of that series goes. Maybe I'll sit through it. Actually, I can guarantee I'm probably, well, I might, I don't know. It, well, it was inoffensively entertaining. That's what I'll say. Uh, let's see. I like the idea of playing as BJ's kids, but it also makes you somewhat concerned for the direction I'll take it. Yeah, we'll have to see what how that works. You know, I do intend to live stream it uh, with Rain, actually, assuming he has the time. Uh, I hope it's good. I don't know. The good thing about it, though is you only really have to buy one copy if you want to play it uh, co-op. Which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to buy the, like, enhanced edition shit. I swear I hit the jump button. And uh, Kevin and I are going to make a run through of that. So that way, if it's SJW crap, I can share the pain! <laughs> Joy! And yes, uh, Kagome does like to say that. So... The fact that you've never used grenades during the whole playthrough is proof of how useful they are. Yeah, they're not altogether that. No, god damn it, not again. It's like yeah. Molotov cocktails. You have to be very careful with them. Yeah, the physics aren't very good on them. And seeing as how this is a uh, close quarters kind of thing, grenades are not. The and just best because thing. they're called cocktails doesn't mean you should try drinking them. Yeah. Now, if you want to do that, I can direct you to a nice recipe for a Moscow mule. 
Ooh, ooh, oh, come on. In real life, I can just grab on the... That. Uh, also, I sat through two other episodes of another anime that looked somewhat interesting. Oh, what was it called? Violent Evergarden or something like that? It sounded like the most anime thing ever. And it was. Basically, the basic plot is this. You got this uh, woman who was like this soldier in like not World War One, And basically she's got to figure out what to do afterwards. It's interesting. It's not bad, but it's one of those things where you can definitely tell it's an anime. Because, like, she wants to basically be a typist, right? But they don't call them typists. They call them, like, mechanical sorting dolls or something. It's like, really? Really? That's that, that's how that translates to? But whatever. It was remotely entertaining. I'm not going to sit and it, but... Oh, crap, 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 crap. No, yep. Give me this old cube, and just give me all that stuff. So wait, will Doom guy become? Will, will Doom three guy become like uh, partly demonized? Will he grow long, flowing white hair and dog ears? I kind of doubt it. Yeah, that'll probably be the SJW version. That's one thing to be thankful for. At least there's no SJW version of uh, Inuyasha because that show could definitely, uh, if it was, it would somehow be worse. Well, it's not that bad, but still. It's After, Rumiko Takahashi. Thankfully, she doesn't care about politics. She just cares about making money. After Doom Eternal comes out, it'd be cool if they'd make a game of like a, like a Doom multiverse of like all the Doom survivors from all the games like meet up, including original Doom guy who looks the same, you know, all pixelated. But uh, that probably never happen. I don't know if they should make it pixelated, but a crisis on infinite dooms. I mean, of course, it'd have to be comedy. Kind of funny seeing like to the Doom 3 guy being like, Doom Slayer, calm, calm down. <laughs> Dude, you're like at 11. We need you at like 3. If not a game, I think we should do like an anime thing. That'd be, that'd be pretty funny. It's been the entire night downloading the demo version of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah, the internet was pretty slow back then, that's for sure. You know, I did try to create a Linux computer once. That's what reminds me of that. Uh... I believe the year was 2007, and I wanted to wanted to basically create a like super cheap computer where I was running like uh, Linux on a flash drive, because I read about it in a uh, popular science magazine. I was like, yeah, I want to try to create something that can basically just emulate games, right? I spent like three days trying to download uh, what was then called damn small Linux. Um, oh no no no! It's still damn small Linux. That and puppy Linux. Do not that that's your big mistake. Do not do that is your first distro of choice. That is very advanced because it's stripped down to its absolute basics and you have to know command line. Well, I didn't actually even get it to download. Since it was <laughs> uh well, I couldn't complete the download, I should say. Uh because remember I was still running, you know, dial up, so I was maxing out like at three kilobytes a second. Uh, Jeez. So, yeah, it never actually completed, and I just gave up on the project, but... Oh, my... Back in the day when Ubuntu first came around, they actually gave out free CDs. They still do. Oh. Okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, yeah, I, even if it had worked, I never would have figured out how to get it to work. So, yeah. Uh, Ubuntu is a good one. I also recommend, if you're for getting into it, uh, Linux Mint... Uh, or Zorin OS is one of my faves. I I don't tend to a lot of them with flashy graphical effects, simply because I'm a command line guy. See, I forgot most of the DOS stuff back in the day. So oh, this is this is different than DOS command line. This is you're going to be using sudo a lot. One minor issue with this game is that... They, they actually have a few distros now that'll let you... Uh, it comes with all the gaming stuff built in. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, you, it, right now, if you want to go crazy with the cheese whiz and just want a cheap <coughs> Linux computer, pick yourself up a Raspberry Five, ra Raspberry Pi... Uh, Raspberry Five. Bleh. Mind fried. <laughs> Bit of the old mental static. Pick up a Raspberry Pi. You can run 
various types of Linux off of it. Uh, if you're wanting to do retro gaming, there's RetroPie. Um, if you're like me and just want to give a finger to absolutely everything, you can run AROS on it, which is basically Amiga OS for you know the Linux generation. Yeah, it's a little easier than back in the day. Okay, I do not know how to open this door. You I think? don't recommend picking up a used Ouya because the the port is eh. Station two. I don't uh, know only pick up a is. Ouya if you know what you're doing. Uh, honestly, for less money, you can get yourself a Mad Cat's Mojo for cheaper, and it does more than the Ouya will. I can pick them up for five bucks, but eh, it's alright. <laughs> I can pick them up for five bucks. I might have to send you some cash. Oh yeah, Rita, thank you for... Wait, what? The Mad Cat that you're talking about? Well, for Ouya. If you can find one for that cheap, yeah, I'll send you some cash. Oh, no, I still... I don't know if I'll keep it, though. But I get yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> okay, where the hell is that fucking... I'm just waiting, because supposedly they're working on a Linux for it. Unless, of course, I need to be back over there, and I can't get back over there, so I might have just screwed <clears> myself. <throat> Hmm. Always Vulcan, hate... you don't choose an Ouya for the Android games. You choose it because it was okay for what it was, then you could hack it. Right. Well, you also don't really need to hack it right now, because the Ouya store is actually still live. You can download all the emulators for free. Or I could just right. sideload the emulators I really want, which aren't on the store, and do that. Right. Uh... But I think it's stuck on Android or NVIDIA Shield. That's the best option right now if you're talking for an Android device for TV. Yeah, I've seen those. This is where I need to look up like a uh, walkthrough of a game I've played a million times. Okay, where the hell is the Switch? Because like, I know actually, it's got to be somewhere and... Huh, actually it looks like uh, Android two. 7 just came out, so yeah, pick that later. I think I'm still running Android 5 on my phone, so yeah, there's that. Lollipop. Ooh. But then again, it's an ancient phone, so... Yeah. Let's see. I'm just wanting one of the Linux phones. <clears throat> but is that going to be able to run anything, though? That's the... That's I'm still running a Nexus 6. I can mm. use command line and sudo. Yes, it will run things. Not the Android app store, but I can get it to run just about anything I need. Hmm. If need be, if you give me enough time, I'll get it. Remember that the Android applications, Android App Store, is just tarted up Linux kernel. Really? Yeah, I'm, still, I'm still running an X6 that came out in 2014, but I'm running a uh, Linux on it, so I'm running uh, Android P. Yeah, so it works great. Command line on a smartphone. Yeah, that does. I had to replace sense. the battery on it once, but that do. I haven't used command line since DOS, so, yeah. And I was never particularly good at that <laughs> either. But I definitely recommend if you're someone who wants to hold on to a phone for a while, make a sure you get a phone right recon. The Unlock the boot loader. With the stairs. Okay, I must have just missed something. I'm blaming the chat. I'm blaming all this talk about command lines with a touchscreen. It just sounds especially heretical. Oh, I'm not going to be using the touchscreen to get the apps onto the, the apps programs onto the phone. I'm going to be using a Bluetooth keyboard. I'm not stupid. Or a uh, masochist. Because I have. Because for me, trying to type on one of those goddamn touchscreens is not an easy prospect. Okay, I'm not seeing a ladder. I bet it's something really obvious, too, that I just can't see. <laughs> oh, maybe it's back in that room. I remember not being able to get past this area, too many, many years ago when I last played this game. So it's gotta be somewhere. And I don't want to just abandon this level halfway through. It's like you have to look up. Try to find some hole in the wall or hole in the ceiling. Because I can't imagine they would design the level in such a way that you're gonna be trapped over here. Yeah, I've had some security armor. That helps me in absolutely no way. I can't imagine this was designed in such a way that if you didn't activate something earlier in the level, you're just fu you're just fucked over here. I can't imagine that. Yeah, it's, it's not, not a Sierra game. 
So what the hell am I missing? Because you would think it would just be a switch you press. You don't go down there, because you go down there, you just get killed. Hmm. I'm just going to blame it on tiredness. I think over here. Of course, this happened the last... This happens every time I play this game, so... It's like, there's always that... There's always that one level in some of these games where you just can't figure it out, and when you finally do, you just want to throw the controller out the window. You get a lot of that in the uh, Jedi Knight games. Jedi Academy's not too bad about that, but Jedi Knight 2 was particularly bad about that. Okay, what the hell? What am I missing? And if I can't find it in exactly five seconds, I'm just going to quit for the day and just restart the level. That oh, was funny also about the Ouya. It didn't, it didn't come with controllers or anything. So I just plugged in the controller that came with the VR headset. Like, oh, this will work. And it did. Yeah, it's it's a USB standard. Like, worst comes to worst, I can just plug in the dongle for either that or the Mad Cat's Mojo controller, and it'll work. Well, what's kind of interesting, though, is uh, you can't buy a Xbox 362 uh, PC controller anymore for, for whatever reason. Or PC Please. adapter for whatever reason. Uh, uh, you can buy them a second hand, but they stopped making them a, uh, about last year. Talking about the wireless ones? Yeah, because I like to use this instead of a number of other things. The Steam controller is great for some things, but... Sometimes I just want to use the original Xbox or the Xbox 360 controller. You can that... buy the wireless ones everywhere. Third-party ones work fine too. That's the dongle that he needs. Yeah. So like, go to go to Amazon, type in Xbox 360 wireless receiver or something. It... Yeah, I did, but like, you, they were actually like 30 bucks now for whatever reason. Oh, well, I haven't checked in a while because I I bought one for the Steam Link. Let me do a quick eBay check. Yeah, I looked there too. I just couldn't really find much. Now, uh... You're not doing it right! I can't hear you. Is there a way to, like, hack one of the other wireless receivers? I doubt that. No, because they run on different frequency. God damn it. Uh, the, eBay... Oh, no, that's not... The special computer magic won't do the computer things? <laughs> that's impossible. Um... You know, in the 1980s it would have worked. I believe the X Phone One controllers use uh, the same as PS4 one. Yeah, but it's like who wants to use one of those? But I know, yeah. The crane is already moving. Okay, so that wasn't that. Okay, so it wasn't a computer. Either. Okay, I found one for seventeen dollars forty-seven cents thus far. Let me get Steve from find cheaper. All right. Level two, level four of Turok two, yeah. You can go for that little box. You came with the driver, it is. Well, I'm sure yeah, I got it. <clears throat> yeah, you shouldn't need the. I don't think you need the driver. It's just automatic. Yeah, what does uh, Santa actually ask? If it's modern, yeah, you shouldn't need. Okay, so I wasn't a complete. It oh, wait a minute. Is there something up here? No, but that's how you get across. I was still doing it wrong. Whatever. I'm just going to blame being tired. Time to throw hardware at a software problem. <laughs> okay, so then we got that. that should you can get some USB breakaway cables for like nine bucks. For the original Xbox, that's very useful. That's for the 360. I don't... Mm. Oh yeah, I think like you can plug that into that thing, whatever that is. I think. Maybe. Yeah, the NVIDIA Shield, that's something you don't really think about too much anymore these days. Or at least I haven't thought about it in years. Yeah, it's the best way to have Android on a, a larger monitor. Still though, like what exactly is even on Android that's worth playing? I mean, let's be reasonable. Uh, I, there's a few games like Carmageddon's back up on there, which is the best version of Carmageddon. Hmm. You know, because it's like 
the only game I've ever thought of that I wanted to play that was only on Android is the uh, version of Dead Space on Android. And that's just because that's its own unique story, and it actually is the original, you know, Dead Space gameplay. Yes. Now there's an oh, there's an emulator on PC called Blue Stacks. Though, while you run Android stuff, PC. Yeah. And I think there's actually that's not a uh, Android game. I haven't actually played all the Dead Space games because I've yet to play the Wii version of. De well, not, it's not the Wii version of Dead Space, but it's the uh, Wii Dead Space game. That's kind of it's an on rail shooter. It does seem like the wireless dongles have appeared. Okay, so there is no switch, so I was in the right place. So what the hell? Where do I go? Well, I think we might be stuck, ladies and gentlemen, at least until the next episode, by which I mean the next week. Because I can't find a sw I can't find a single... a single panel to press. There's no substation 2 anywhere. And all these monitors are, you know, fucking not working. That's why you shouldn't stick with CRT. Well, of course, then again, you can use CRT as like a flail, as we saw in the Doom film. No, the problem in the CRT is the problem is that the computer next to those monitors is fragged. No, that's true. Probably shouldn't have got a uh, e-machines. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I don't know where to go. This happened the well. This happened the first time I played the game. So, yeah, I'm either A, can have to look up a walkthrough, or B, chuck the, win chuck the window out of the game, or chuck the game out the window. I don't know which. We'll, we'll figure something out. So, ultimately... So, General, why do you think your channel isn't as popular? Uh, it is mainly because of exposure. I do not know what other people do to he get... He doesn't expose people. himself enough. Oh, I He's not Dark Side Phil. <laughs> <laughs> That's just painful. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, it really comes down to exposure. Uh, you know, I never joined any of the uh, big name websites. What's kind of funny is like I, I came like that close to like Retroware TV, but of course the video they chose to look at was one that wasn't very good, and that was Metroid uh, Fusion. Why they chose that one, I don't know. I came kind of close to getting on uh, Channel Awesome. Thank, glad I dodged that bullet, so... I don't know. You didn't I, I, dodge a bullet. You dodged a broadside. Shit. So, you know, uh, when it comes to getting popular on YouTube, I have no idea. What's kind of funny, though, is I actually have a more active fan base than people who have many times my number of subscribers. Which makes me wonder if some people who have, like, high sub counts actually just buy, like, subscriber bots, and that drives them up higher in, like, the... Uh, AI metrics? Some do, yeah. It's, it, there's a lot of astroturfing, like uh, video length, video uh, upload rapidity, um, astroturfing, as you mentioned, uh, social media. There's a lot of ways to increase exposure, but it doesn't increase quality. Yeah, so I, I just don't know. I mean, for me, like I know that I'm not like that popular, and after 10 years, I'm not nearly as popular as I'd like, but I enjoy doing this stuff, so I have no intention of stopping uh, ever, honestly. I mean, I, this is just something I enjoy doing. And, you know, 2020 is going to be even better than 2019, just because I should theoretically have more time then. And I want to do a bunch of different things, you know, like, not just your typical reviews, because that can get old after a while, even though that's primarily what people come to see. But the little ancillary stuff, you know, like this, I really enjoy the live streaming, like, a lot. Uh, I do intend to live stream some strange stuff in the future. Well, not strange, but, like, something different than just your typical, you know, video game here. I do intend to live stream uh, an RPG, an actual tabletop one, if Rain is willing to uh, put up with my original character, Do Not Steal. And... At some point, I do want to uh, live stream a game of Battletech once the uh, thing comes in, and I actually can figure it out and figure out a way to film, figure out a way to record it while recording me. I only have the one webcam, so 
So I'd have to get another one of those and kind of figure out a way to set it up. And I still don't know where to go. I know it's something obvious too, because now I kind of recognize this area now. And I remember it being something super obvious, but I don't remember what it is. It's like, it's, at the t it's just like, I don't... There's something here that I'm missing. You know what I would do if this was the PC version? I would literally just no clip my way into that door. I would not actually continue wandering around like I am. Because it's something so obvious that I'm just... I, I literally am going to want to just take a hammer to this thing. Maybe I shoot that. That didn't work. It's like, what the hell could it be? It can't be that hard to figure out. It's one fucking button. Or something. Or maybe the game's broken. There's always that possibility. The game could be broken and I can't actually progress past this area. It can happen, though I don't think it happened with any copies of Doom 3. I'm not sure. So, yeah, I don't know what what there is what there is that I'm missing. But ultimately, I have reached my hour and 45 mark. So, final thoughts. Oh, uh, hmm. <laughs> I think the fact that we just <laughs> lost, like, where do we go? What do I do? I don't know. No one does. Uh, Roll20 like... is interesting, Vulcan. Uh, but no, I was thinking Fantasy Grounds because it's got full D official D20 support for all of what he'd want to do. So I suppose good D20 system. I guess that works. And Jacques, before I go, uh, the Bounty Hunter review is coming out next Tuesday. So, yeah. Alright, so I'm General Watts. Uh, good D20, good Battletech, whatever. Makes you happy. And I've, of course, been joined by... Rainick. And Ray. And, uh... I, I wait, I, I put the outro in the wrong order. Um, run! <laughs> <laughs>